hello guys welcome back to another video so today's video let us talk about PID pelvic inflammatory disease I don't know if I have ever talked about it but I think have not so because somebody asked about it let us talk about it today we have also other series we have nutrition series we have not started we have family planning series is still running we have pregnancy series don't lose hope we are still working on those videos so let's talk about pid guys and before we talk uh we, before the main topic make sure you subscribe kindly please subscribe please subscribe like share comment and don't forget to turn your notification bell so that every time i post a video you will be the first person to be notified so let's define what is pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease is a serious infection in your uterus in your fallopian tube or in the ovary the organs that are in the pelvic bone and that is the uterus the ovaries the fallopian tube the all the whole part of the uterus or the home of a woman so it's it's affect women and people assigned female at birth pid develop when certain of uh, certain types of bacteria spread from the vagina to reproductive organs because uh, i want to say that bacteria from untreated uh, sexually transmitted infection are the most common cause of the pid yeah so if you have ever suffered from any sexual transmitted infection and you have not treated you have you did not treat these conditions well you might suffer pelvic inflammatory disease in future <laughs> so how do you get pid i've said most of the common cause is sexually transmitted uh, infection the the organism that cause those diseases are the one that can make you suffer from pelvic inflammatory diseases so how common is pe uh, pelvic inflammatory disease each year at least we have several people who are suffering from pid and uh, it's always good that you treat sexual transmitted infection so that you don't get these diseases in future so maybe you are asking what are the signs and symptoms of pid you may not realize you have pid symptoms or you may not notice them until sometimes it is uh, there was or until you suffer from a, a certain disease or until maybe you go for uh, scanning or in lab investigation in, is when you will know but these are some of the common signs that a person who is suffering from pid will present with pain or tenderness in your stomach or lower abdomen or belly the most common symptoms that is the most common symptom that a pain pain in the abdomen in the stomach in the belly is the most common experience symptom another point or another symptom is vaginal discharge vaginal discharge that is yellow or green which is always unusual color or you can have unusual order uh, as we know that your vagina should not smell any bad smell but if you experience unusual order or bad smell you should go and consult or you should go to the hospital so that you check which type of disease you are suffering from another point or another symptoms is fever fever because of the infection you might have you might be having a certain bacteria that is causing that pelvic inflammatory disease and then you will suffer from fever or chills you might have nausea and vomiting you might have pain during sex uh, you might have 
mm, burning sensation when you go to urinate and also you might have irregular period because you know the pelvic inflammatory diseases attach the uterus the ovaries and the fallopian tubes and these are the organs that are are mostly uh, they are the organs that uh, may take place is that the right thing, word the organs that may participate when you are um, menstruating so if they are touched you might have an unusual uh, irregular menses or you might have spotting or you might have severe cramps when you are menstruating so maybe you are asking where do you feel PID pain pelvic inflammatory diseases pain is mainly felt in the lower abdomen or pelvic region if okay it may feel tender and so or like a dull ache but those are the areas when where you will feel the pain i know also you might be asking what are the causes but we already said that sexual transmitted diseases are the most common cause so um, let's just talk about it so that you know some of them apart from whatever i've said so bacteria enter into your reproductive tract causing pelvic inflammatory diseases which means pelvic inflammatory diseases is caused by bacteria so these bacteria are passed from the vagina through the cervix and up into the uterus through the fallopian tube and into the ovary and this is where now you will have abnormal menses you will not be able to get pregnant because this bacteria may interfere with your reproductive organ so normally when bacteria enter into the vagina your cervix keep them from spreading uh, from spreading deeper on the other organs however any type of infection that disrupts your cervix so you find that this uh, bacteria they may distract distract the cervix and therefore the cervix will not be capable of preventing them from entering into the uterus uh, through the fallopian tube to the ovary so they will interfere with the function normal function of the uh, the cervix so many types of bacteria can cause pid but the most common infection that cause pid are the gonorrhea if you have ever suffered from gonorrhea you are likely to suffer from pid and chlamydia you get both of these infection through unprotected sex you suffer from pid so uh less common pid happened to, uh, when normal bacteria get into reproductive organs this can happen after after birth yeah after birth after maybe pelvic surgery after miscarriage or maybe uh getting into interuterine devices so those are less cases that uh, bacteria can uh, access the reproductive organs how long does it take to have symptoms it can take anywhere from a few days to a few weeks to develop to a PID if untreated gonorrhea or chlamydia is the cause if you get PID from something else it may take several months to develop it so if you get PID because of the gonorrhea and chlamydia it will take few 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 days few weeks few months and then the symptoms will start developing but if you get it from the, something else from maybe miscarriage from maybe when you are giving birth then it might take several days several weeks several months and years for it to man manifest okay let's continue does touching cause pelvic inflammatory diseases this is another question that most of you i know you are asking because ladies they like they like touching their vagina this touching or touching i don't know the the correct pronunciation but you know what i'm saying does touching cause pelvic inflammatory diseases most study report only an association between touching 
between touching and PID. What am I saying? I'm saying most studies report only an association between touching and PID. What can be said is that touching can lead to bacterial vaginosis. Dutching can lead to bacterial vaginosis infection, but uh, this, but there are, there are only a potential association between dutching and PID. So most healthcare provider avoid advice against dutching. So dutching is not right. Ladies, you like doing dutching, and dutching is not right for your vagina. So stop it. Stop it. The vagina is, is meant to smell like a vagina. Not like, it, it doesn't, it should not smell nice. It should not smell like, I don't know what to think or what you say about it, but vagina should not smell nice. It just, it is, it is meant to smell just like a vagina so another question that we should ask ourselves who is at risk of getting pid who is at risk who are those group who are at higher risk of getting pid number one sexually transmitted infection patient what do i mean somebody who have ever suffered from sti is at risk of getting pid especially if you have a you have ever suffered from gonorrhea and chlamydia another point or another group of people those who are having sex with many different partners because you see the cause of, of the most common cause of PID is sexually transmitted infection so if you are having sex with multiple partners you are putting yourself at risk of getting pelvic inflammatory diseases another group of people if you have ever have history of pid there is high chances that the disease will all uh, will subsequent occur the the, the 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 disease will occur in future if you don't take precaution also uh those are sexually active and younger than 25 years old they might get pelvic inflammatory diseases. Those who have, uh, if uh, if maybe you, those who are giving birth at home, the bacteria can. If you, if those who are uh, giving birth at home, this is what will happen. You know, if you are giving birth at home, the people who are helping you to give uh, to, to to deliver does not take a lot of precaution concerning infection so the infection the bacteria might get its way to the reproductive organ and it might that is the time you might get PID and also those who are not uh, treating some of the sexual transmitted infection can also get PID if you have ever had a pelvic surgery and miscarriage you are also at risk of getting PID the next question that we should ask ourselves, or I know maybe you are you are asking about yourself, are there any complications of PID? Yes, there are so many complications of pelvic inflammatory diseases because you know it is something that it is a condition that touches your reproductive organs and any condition that attach or affect your reproductive organ is putting you at risk of getting some of the complication and number one you will get a chronic pelvic pain especially when you are menstruating when you are having sex when you a chronic pain that you might not know the cause another complication you might have ectopic pregnancy because after this gonorrhea and chlamydia have healed they may left a scar in the uterus and this scar may block the fetus from maybe after being fertilized uh, for it to touch to the right place or into the uterus so you might get ectopic pregnancy another thing that you may suffer from is infertility 
yes you might get infertility in such a way that you know this condition touches your reproductive organ and the, when a condition touches your reproductive organ you are you are at risk or you have high chances of suffering from infertility because they may interfere like when you get PID because of gonorrhea and chlamydia they may interfere with your ovaries they may interfere with your fallopian tube they may interfere with your with your uterus and therefore even sometimes getting pregnant may become difficult or impregnating somebody may become difficult that is what i wanted to say about pid so so okay sorry before i forget about something if you have pelvic inflammatory disease tell your sexual partner uh, that they should receive treatment otherwise when you receive treatment and they don't receive treatment you may get pid again when you reassume sex so you have you must treat both partners must treat themselves and another thing can PID be prevented? Yes, PID can be prevented, whereby those who are having so many sexual partners, they reduce the number or they have one partner and they, be, they, 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 they become faithful to them using barrier methods so that you, may not, you don't get sexual transmitted infection. Also, uh, another thing that you should... Uh, can help in prevention when you uh, notice the symptoms the symptoms that I have said you should get uh, seek medical attention before it is too late yeah you could also you should uh, seek medical attention be, be, before it is too late and also you should go for regular checkup so that you see if you are having any type of uh, this sexual transmitted infection or if you are maybe you are suffering from PID so guys I think I've reached the end of this video if you have not subscribed kindly I'm asking you kindly subscribe like share and comment let's meet in the next video if you would like me to talk about something you can tell me in the comment section I will always consider that bye till next time